There's been a disaster at a nuclear power plant in Fukushima, Japan. Oh my god! What happened? A giant tsunami hit the nuclear plant, flooding the cooling systems and leading to a meltdown of three separate reactors. A triple meltdown. Some people say the planet is doomed. It's the largest man-made disaster in history. Oh my god! How many people have been killed? Two million? Three million? Well, not, not quite that many. But it's a real disaster, right? There must have been a massive death toll. Meltdown must have killed more people than any other disaster in history. More than Bhopal in India in 1986, for example, where over 100,000 people died. I wouldn't say 100,000. But thousands, right? Hundreds. Hundreds of people killed. Well... Thousands? As yet, there haven't been any deaths as such, yet. Nobody died, huh? Yet. However, radiation must be spewing out in massive amounts. International scientific bodies must be predicting cancer deaths in the tens of thousands in the future. Actually, neither the World Health Organization nor the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation have predicted any significant increase in cancer rates. And in fact, radiation-induced cancers, if they occur at all, will probably be impossible to detect, because they are too few. Those scientists, what do they know? Anyway, it's just as well they evacuated, isn't it? Probably many lives were saved by quick evacuation. Well, I, I wouldn't say that exactly. No, seriously. How many lives are predicted to have been saved by evacuation? Um... Seriously, tell me. I want to know. Turns out the evacuation killed at least 572 what people. What are you talking about? Well, the level of radiation was too low to actually affect human health in any measurable way. But the government didn't know that, and the evacuation was carried out in a blind panic. Scores of bedridden, sick and elderly hospital patients were abandoned by hospital staff, and left to die humiliating deaths of neglect and dehydration while lying in pools of their own urine and feces. Hundreds more people who did get to evacuation centres died from stress-related illnesses or because existing chronic health problems were exacerbated by the crowded and chaotic conditions. In fact, it's estimated that the psychological damage of the accident massively dwarfs any okay, radio... Okay, okay, I, I get the picture. But it was still necessary to evacuate, right? After all, large areas of northern Japan will be uninhabitable for centuries. People living there will have children with two heads and hideous deformities. Well, surprisingly, at the levels of radiation recorded around the plant, there's never been a link to any negative human health effects. So, the evacuation was probably unnecessary, except for those living extremely close to the plant, and then only as a precaution. Certainly, the evacuation that happened created more harm than good. So, people are coming back to repopulate the evacuated areas. What? Is that safe? Completely. In fact, radiation levels in Fukushima now are much lower, in many places an order of magnitude lower, than natural background levels of radiation. In many parts of the world, such as Ramsar, Iran, Kerala in India, Gurapati in Brazil, Yangjing yes, yes, in China. Yes, okay, okay. And these places have no record at all of elevated cancer risks. Wow, amazing. Yeah. But that's natural radiation, right? Fukushima produced artificial radiation. So There's no distinction in terms of human health between artificial and natural radiation. How is your body supposed to tell the difference between artificial and natural. Um, in fact, the real scientifically proven carcinogens are in big cities like Tokyo or Osaka. Smog from industry and vehicles has been shown to induce asthma, emphysema, bronchitis, lung cancer, shortness of breath, respiratory deaths, cystic fibrosis, heart disease. Ah, so the air in Tokyo and Osaka is more dangerous to breathe than the air around the Fukushima nuclear plant. Oh, absolutely. So now people are evacuating Tokyo to go live in Fukushima, right? Hmm, you would think. But you can't trust radiation levels as reported by the government, can you? There's always a cover-up. 
The government has no interest in letting the people know the truth of what happened at Fukushima. Actually, the opposite is the case. Governments and scientific bodies like the World Health Organization routinely inflate radiation estimates for health purposes as a precaution in order to allow for a large margin of error. They do the same thing when making recommendations for allowable levels of radiation in food products. In fact, international safety limits always assume the worst possible theoretical outcomes of irradiation. Oh, oh okay, okay, I get your point. I, I can see where you're coming from. Basically, you're saying that uh, nobody's been killed or injured by the Fukushima accident. The evacuation was pretty much unnecessary and that in general the severity of the accident has been massively exaggerated. Basically, that's correct. So, what? why are we panicking again? Well, um, well, 